Hey internet, on today's episode of The Fast and the Fourier, I am headed to northeastern Connecticut to visit Rational Acoustics, the developers of smart measurement software. The topic is limiters and power compression, how to set limiters. So we're gonna go, hopefully not smoke too many loudspeakers, hopefully not over excursion some eights with the truckload worth of measurement equipment I have in my otherwise completely unloaded Dodge 1500, which is uh, not for lack of power and has possibly the best factory sound system I've heard in years, but is otherwise a very big and very boring truck. This is it. This is where the magic happens. The destination is on your left. Rational Acoustics. What a nice building. Arrived. So we're gonna try and set limiters for this subwoofer, which is a two by eight with a port. And uh, to do that, it's really nice to know how hot the woofers get. So I'm gonna put a, a thermocouple in there. I'm gonna tape it to the woofer through the port. So this is the guess and check method that we're gonna use today. And I think is actually the most effective and relatively foolproof way to do this. If you can afford to possibly lunch a woofer, which, uh, I mean, makes you buy more woofers. So that's a good idea, right? So get the loudspeaker's spec sheet and uh, find on it the AES power handling, which in this case is uh, 300 watts. And then divide by about four and set your limiter there at, in this case, 75 watts, which is like, I don't know, 40 volts or something. Michael did the math, but uh, then I changed what we're gonna do, so. And then put the put the woofer in the box that you intend to use, or one very much like it, and get some way to measure temperature, and then put pink noise into it with that limiter set so that you're into the limiter, uh, and wait a little while and see what happens. If it gets like close to 100 degrees C, you need to set your limiter lower. And if it doesn't get past like, I don't know, 60, you could probably take your limiter a little higher if you don't have too much excursion. So Chris, here's my amplifier jockey. And we've got uh, Armonia open on this on this laptop. And it's very hard to see, but we put on a high pass and a low pass that are appropriate. And then we went and set our, our limiter settings for this little sub, which is uh, just a pair of eights. So it's not very high. We got them set at 60 watts, 10 second attack, 30 second release. That'll be appropriate. And we're gonna use Smart to put a bunch of pink noise into it. Uh, starting anytime. So here's our setup. We've got uh, a PowerSoft amplifier. It's got a DSP built into it. And uh, then we got a current clamp and a voltage clamp on the NL4 going out to the subwoofer. And we're taking a power reading here. It's warming up, but definitely not as fast as I'd like. So I think we're gonna determine how long has it been? Five minutes. So we're intentionally trying to drive this thing into the limiter, and that's the limiter right there. It's about 5 dB. So we're, we're pretty good to harden the limiter, so it should be pretty constant power coming out, even though the big noise going in. Uh, and then we're just going to wait to see how hot it gets. And so far, it's been about 15 minutes. It hasn't gotten that hot, so we're probably going to turn it up pretty soon and see how, uh, how hot. How hot can it get, Chris? Too hot. It's hot. Outside. It's way too hot. I'll give it 3 dB more. Uh, it did something. It's definitely getting noisier. The limiter is starting to turn from yellow to orange. <laughs> That's good. 38, 39. So the thermocouple is a little high, or else this is a little low. Hard to say. It may have the emissivity wrong. This is the problem with trying to tell this stuff. I mean, I can touch it, so it's not too hot yet. I'll put this thing back together and we'll start it back up. We'll, we'll take the limiter from, I don't know, what do we have now, Chris? 40 watts? 60. 60 watts? So we'll try uh, 80 and let's see how hot it gets. Now that it's a little bit warm, I'm not worried about putting a little more power into it because uh, it's already soaked up some heat, so it's not going to get hurt if we beat it up a little bit more. We're trying to, you know, create some distance between themselves and Crown because Crown makes false power. <laughs> takes a really long time. 
We've been here for a long, long time waiting for this thing to get hot. It's not so hard to just make a woofer or a coil hot, but to make it hot without destroying it uh, and to find out what the long-term limit's gonna be takes a really long time because it, it, you're, you're kind of up on here on the curve and so you're just waiting. Three hours later. So this thing's reached sort of a steady state around 60 degrees C uh, and the sun has gone behind the clouds so it's uh, there's another source of heating that's gone away. So we're gonna just bump it up to 150 and see what happens and then we're gonna call it quits in about 15 minutes and say that we found a reasonable limiter setting for this box. You can see we set the, yeah, the limiter to 150 watts and immediately it took off about uh, a dB, dB and a half of, uh, of limiting. So this thing's pretty well stabilized. We ended up at 150 watts thermal with the limiter. And uh, this thermocouple tells me we're at 68 degrees Celsius or so, which is pretty good. It's hot, it's hot enough. It's probably in heavy power compression. I don't really want to go into more than two or three dB of power compression. The woofer will take six or eight before it burns up long-term. So this is a point where you definitely don't want to be putting any more power into it, uh, but you've got a nice healthy threshold of safety before you start to uh, have things break apart or smoke or smell bad or anything like that. So I would say that in this case, one half AES for this ported cabinet is a pretty good number and uh, maybe wouldn't use it as a starting point, but I'm not gonna go any higher than that. So just for fun and at the suggestion of uh, some guy in the audience, uh, we're gonna show you the effect of these limiters, which, you know, we've been running into them for like an hour and a half now, slowly increasing the power that has meant that there's a lot of free gain in the system, which is being limited out. And if we disable them, so just have no limiters and run the same gain where there was 5, 6 dB of limiting. It's back! No! Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> that, uh, you need a new woofer, Chris. <laughs> that was finally... So it seems that maybe choosing about half the AES rated power for the uh, power limiters in the loudspeaker is a pretty good goal. Remember that as you apply more power and the coil gets hotter, the impedance goes up. So the amount of volts you need to put in for the same amount of power keeps getting higher and higher. It's a bit self-limiting. So there's sort of a safety mechanism in there. The real question is how much power compression are you willing to live with? Power compression makes it more difficult to get the same power into the loudspeaker and the same output but on top of that, the characteristic of the loudspeaker changes. One of the reasons that pro loudspeakers have such a low Q to begin with, which is the very broad and high impedance peak, is so that they can get hot and still have pretty good performance. 3 dB of power compression means that the impedance of the coil is doubled and the Q is also doubled. It's really a very different loudspeaker and a much worse one than you started off with. Before I leave you, I wanted to show you how we do a real AES two hour power test here at BNC Speakers R&D headquarters in Florence, Italy. We do it in this bunker, which is double soundproofed and more importantly, fireproof. If you've lit a loudspeaker on fire before, you don't want to do it again. The test is done in free air. And that means it's not like inside your box. It's the best case for power. There's lots of cone motion to pump air around the coil and it's the worst case for excursion because there's no box to limit excursion. So the power number is quite high and the loudspeaker is taking a lot of abuse that may not be realistic compared to your real application. But here you go, it's very loud.